Father God, I do thank you, Lord, today for the beauty of what you've done in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the amazing, amazing time, excellent weather. But Lord, today we need your we need your help to get this Bible study done and to get Lord to look at what this is. Nothing like doing a whole bunch of work to get something done, Lord. I just know that you have a great power. You have something that you want to say today. And Lord, for this we will give you the praise and the glory. We thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Alright. So, um, I believe that's everything. Here we go. We're talking about spiritual authority. This is our, our fourth time talking this. And uh, you got your mic on? I do. Turned on? It is on. I am recording. So uh, today we're going to be talking about Jesus, which is kind of a kind of like one of my favorite subjects of all time. So that's kind of a neat thing. So um, let's let's go through our review of what we talked on last week. Uh, we talked about authority as what. As part of the structure of rule that's invented by God. God made authority and he set up a structure and we have to understand how that structure works and the more we listen to that structure the better we will be off. Okay, we got that down. Now we know that Adam was instructed to rule the Garden of Eden and then after he and Eve were separated, of course God called them Adam, they're still separated, then they're given authority over the entire earth. That's exciting. So man was given all of that, but then he submitted to sin. And sin twisted things into a fight as defilement messed up everything. Uh, just crazy. So we know that that's what happened. Authority got all sorts of messed up, and there has been a struggle with authority ever since. This thing has been a fight from that time on. So getting to... Yes. We can't see the screen. You can't see the screen. Aren't you just... See, you guys are just so good. Okay, which means I have got to... Um, can't see the screen. How about if I share it with you? Would that be good? Yes. So, is that better for you? Yes. Oh. That's better. We can see the slides now. What a concept. Okay. And ooh, there's people waiting in the waiting room. Okay, there's here we go. Admit him, admit her. Oops. Admit him. Now maybe we can just get started, huh? <laughs> Okay. All right. Now. Hi. Are we connected to everybody? Yep. Yeah, I guess. Well, connected to me, anyways. And th that's that's really the most important part, right? <laughs> exactly. In my self-important world, that's the only important part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody can see the screen now, right? Yeah. Yes. It says authority. Yes, I can see it. There we are, authority. I'm going to run all that through that again so that everybody catches up with us. We are understanding the authority, and we had already prayed, so God bless these new people. All right. Um, authority is a structure of what God has invented. God set everything up as a structure, and he's not a God of confusion. He set this whole thing up. He invented it. Uh, every time we fight authority, we're fighting something that God has invented. That's a scary concept, isn't it? Well, then when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, he told them to rule over the garden. And then when he separated Adam from Eve and he called them Adam, uh, then he told them to conquer the earth and subdue it. That's pretty slick. He told them to bring everything under his authority. That was awesome. But then he sinned, and sin twisted everything into a fight as defilement messed up everything. Okay? So, everything we have going that's a problem with this because, well, there's sin involved. What a concept. Okay, so there has been a struggle ever since with authority. 
It's always been a struggle. From rule one, as you go through the entire Bible, you'll see a struggle about who's in charge, who wants to be in charge, who's trying to be in charge, who's defiling everybody else around it, who's doing the rules, who's not doing the rules. It has all been messed up. But the issue that we're trying to do now is we're trying to get to know what God wants and what He intended. That's the idea behind all this, to get what He is doing. Yay. So it's going to take a little bit of unraveling to kind of get this all together, as we've been seeing for the last three weeks. Okay, Romans 13 tells us that there is not just one authority, but there are many authorities. Okay, so Romans 13, 1 and 2 says this. Did you need that back? Please. Just a second. Somebody's not paying attention, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, well, what can I say? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Has to get used to the routine again. Yeah. Romans 13, 1 and 2 says this. Now, we've talked about let us all be subject, which is hupotasso, the subject under the order of. Let us all be subject to, then it says higher authorities. That's the part that is kind of fascinating, is that we are subject to something called a higher authority. For there is no authority except from God. But the existing authorities have been, to Tasso, been put in order, ordained by God. So that the one anti Tasso standing against the order, or uh, against the order of the authority of God, has opposed Anthostami to stand against the ordinance of God, and the ones opposing will receive judgment to themselves. This is an awful lot of discussion about authority. It says you've got to be subject to it because God set it in order to make things work. If you're going against it, you're going to stand against the order of God. And if you do that, you're going to go against the very thing He has diatasoed, brought us through to bring us to a certain point. You fight Him, you don't get what you need. You fight God, you don't become who you're supposed to be. What a concept. Okay? We talked about Matthew 8, 5 through 7. Matthew 8. A little story that happened to Jesus. And Jesus, entering into Capernaum, a centurion came near to him, begging him, saying, Lord, my child has been laid in the house, a paralytic, being grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. This guy's a Gentile. He's a Roman. Okay? That's strike two. I mean, you can't get much worse than that. Okay? But he knew that he didn't have the necessary power to heal his this uh, child. And he didn't have the power. He couldn't do it. So he had to find somebody who did. But he also knew how to humble himself. He knew he didn't have the authority, let alone the power. He didn't have the power. He didn't have the authority. Now, eventually we're going to be getting into how, how power works. But right now, it's just authority. Then verses 8 and 9 say, And answering, the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Now, he did that because he knew he was a Gentile in a Jewish land. And he knew if anybody had entered into his roof, they'd be unclean. But it's a defiling thing for them. So he said, no, I'm not worthy for you to enter my roof. He was being very, very sensitive to it. He said, but only speak a word and my child will be healed. For I'm also a man under authority, having soldiers under myself. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another one, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now, he knew here that when he starts telling his slave do this, it's because not because he has authority, but because he's under authority, and that put him in the structure. It wasn't that the centurion was on top, it was that he was under an authority, and that gave him the authority. This is the way it has to be. Do you have your own authority? No. It's always given to you by something above you. Now that's going to be very important today as we look at that. He understood how the system works. Okay. He had to be under to be over. He knew how submission and authority worked. Now this guy knew what was going on. And this is why this next verse is so powerful because it says in hearing Jesus marveled and he said to those following truly I say to you not even in Israel did I find such faith 
that Jesus changed the subject. Did he? No. Okay. He says, wow, this guy understands authority, and when he did that, he said, that's faith. Well, that should tell us something big. He saw, the centurion saw and understood spiritual authority. He knew in governmental authority, he knew where he stood. But when it came to spiritual authority, he was bereft of any authority. He didn't have any. He knew the spirit realm. He knew that there was a realm higher than his realm, higher than governmental, higher than physical. There was something higher. This centurion knew that. It's amazing for a Gentile and a Roman. Okay? But he recognized true authority when he saw it. He said, now, this Jesus guy, he has authority to heal the sick, but not just authority to touch them. All he has to do is say the word. He knew the power of the spoken word. And this took Jesus completely by surprise. Jesus did not see it. He, didn't, he went, whoa, I had not seen this kind of thing in all of Israel. And he called it what? He called it faith. Submitting to authority and then being empowered by that authority and speaking things into existence, well, that's faith. It's also meekness for those of you who know that, that little thing. But it's how to be submitted, to be humble, to be underneath the real power. Jesus called that faith. This should, this should blow our minds. This should be something that we should all be looking at going, so how is my faith? Is my faith limited? Maybe it's because my understanding of authority is limited. Maybe I need to submit more. Where's my faith lie? <laughs> this is good. This is really good. Authority. So, do you get angry or do you have judgments? Well, if you do, it's because there's a messed up authority. What is your actual goal? If your goal is to submit to God, oh, then you're in the right place. This is perfect. If your goal is to submit to God, ah, everything's fine. However, if your goal is to prove your worth, well, you're in trouble. If your goal is to prove how good you are, you're in trouble. If your goal is to try to make people submit to your authority, you're in trouble. You see, the whole thing is, if you're ready to submit to God, now you're in the right place. If you have to make people submit, then you have no true authority. True authority will be known. That's really important to know that. And so will true submission. True authority will be known. True submission will be known. There's my lightning. That means that was all I'm going to do for review from last week. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Now we're going to start getting into the new material. Now, you got to know from here on out, I'm going to try. I'm going to attempt to speak slowly. I'm going to attempt to not get excited. It's not going to happen, but I'm trying. I'm going to give it my best shot. Okay, here we go. Oh, Lord bless us. Submission. You're trying. Yes, I am very trying. Yes. To, to you especially. <laughs> Every soul needs to be in submission. Now, we established that the very first lesson. That every soul needs to be in submission. Let every soul be in submission to higher authorities. Hmm. Uses the Greek word hupo tasso. Under and the order. Hupo under tasso the order. Hupo tasso under the order. Every soul needs to be submissive, which is under the order. Now, people don't like to hear that. That's what I have discovered. <laughs> I have found this to be true in my own life. I found this to be true in just about everybody that comes into my sessions. People don't like to hear that they need to be under somebody else's order. We fight being under anyone else. Well, I'm the top. And we'll figure out ways. We know we're submitted to this and this and this. And then there's certain ways we think, I've got to be in control of this. And it makes us prove that we have valid ability to do something. We've got to have some authority over something. And we'll fight in some of the stupidest ways to gain an authority somewhere along the line. But we need to humble ourselves to submit. And that's just not a popular idea. But we must, what 
we must know what is over us and why. Now I put that to a degree in there because the word why, the question why, is usually not the right question. But we need to know what is over us and why we are to submit to it, why we are under it, why it is in place. We're limited with the why because we're not going to know all that. But we must know what is over us and why. Where are we sitting in this thing? Where, where are we as we sit in this? We need to know that to a degree. And if I am the height of authority, <laughs> oh, I need to fear. I need to be afraid. If, if I'm the top of that authority chain, oh, Lord have mercy. You know, people say, ah, oh, anybody can grow up to be president. Who would want to? You know, I, no. Would you like to be in in charge of the country right now? No, no. no. And I, uh, I know a lot of people who are saying that they want to be. Do I want them in charge of this country? Right? No. Okay. That's all as, as deep as my political is going to go today. But <laughs> that's about it. But uh, listen, folks. Being underneath authority is a very nice place, and the Bible talks about that. And we'll be hitting that. It's a good place to be, is under authority. But then you have to do something with that authority above you. What do you need to do with it? Well, you need to pray for them. You need to help them. There's a lot of things we need to still do. So, we try to keep authority so we can have control over certain things. Or we try to have some kind of control. Which is a misnomer, because how much control do you really think you have? <laughs> Not much, okay? But we try to keep some semblance of authority so we feel like we have validity, okay? We try to control the pain that we have lived. That's, that's pretty deep. Uh, we've been through a lot of pain, and so what do we do? We try to control that pain, and we bring it under our authority, supposedly. But we don't trust that authority is there for our good. We do not trust that authorities that are over us are there for our good. We trust that they are there to suppress us. They are there to just keep us in line. Not there for our good. That authority is there for their good. Okay? We have some pretty sad attitudes about our authority. Our experience, though, is against us because we've all experienced bad authorities. Every one of us. We've experienced somebody who abused authority, who didn't do it right, who wasn't a good boss, who wasn't something. We've all experienced it. Okay? And so we rule to protect ourselves from bad authority. I'm going to keep this in church so I can keep this bad authority from affecting me or hurting me any longer. It doesn't work. Because those judgments that we have against those authorities are what's killing us. We can't have those judgments. Judgments against authority puts us as a judge over that authority, then we'll be held accountable to being over that authority. That's not going to be good. God is going to hold us accountable for those judgments. We must forgive them. I, I didn't use must in bold or underline, but at least I made it capitals. Okay? I could have done a whole bunch more. I could have put it in colors and had arrows pointed to it. I could have done all sorts of fun stuff, but the fact is we must forgive those who have hurt us. We must forgive those authorities that have been over us, that have not done right. Boy, we could take names, couldn't we? We could just say, <laughs> Any, anybody... Uh, under, been under bad authorities. I hope somebody out there is relating to this. <coughs> so, the issue is we must submit to higher authorities. Higher than what? Well, higher than us. <laughs> but under God. You see, even an authority that's above us is under God. Who do we have a relationship? We have a better relationship with the Father than we do with those who are in authority over us. Interesting. We need to know that authority structure is above them. But God loves us and He will bring things in line. That's why we have to pray for those who are above us. Does that mean they'll always do what we want? Uh, no. Will we always like it that they're above us? Uh, no. Okay. But what we can do is we can trust that God is working. So we have to trust God to work through them 
for us. And we'll be getting into that a lot deeper as we go along. But there is a higher authority that we do need to know about. This is a good one. We need to know about this one. There's one that is directly above us. Directly. I mean, we're talking about immediately right there above us. And it's one that is directly submitted to the Father. And Well, who might that be? Well, how about the ultimate example? Jesus Christ. You see, He is directly above me. There's nobody between Jesus and me. I have an, a perfect relationship. He's right there. But there's also nothing between Jesus and the Father. So how close do I need to get to the Father's authority? Well, if you want to really be accurate, I am also in direct relationship with the Father. I am also in direct relationship with the Holy Spirit. How much am I in direct relationship with the absolute authorities of the universe? Totally. But let's talk about Jesus himself. Because Jesus is the mediator between God and man. We know that he is... Well, he came and became a man, and he was one of us. He's the one that's bringing us to it. He's the one that Abraham said, Hmm, look, they passed between the pieces. They're in covenant. That's the Father and the Son. We kind of know that Jesus is the one that is between us and the Father. That's a very good thing. He always takes us to the Father. There's not a break between us and the Father. We are very close to Him. But Jesus is the one that paid that price with His blood. This is really, really important. So we get to hit some scriptures. Now this gets to be kind of fun here. In Mark chapter 1, <laughs> 21 and 22, it says this. And they passed along into Capernaum. This is Jesus and the disciples. And entering into a synagogue at once, he taught on the Sabbaths. And wasn't teaching about Sabbaths, but he was on in the Sabbath and is on the Sabbath, so he was teaching in the synagogue. And they were astounded at his doctrine. Why? For Because he was teaching them as having authority and not as the scribes. Jesus taught as one who had authority over what he was teaching. Whoa. Well, that was you know, unique. They, they all remarked at that. There's something different here. He has authority to teach. Amazing. When you teach with authority, that changes things. That's a powerful thing. He was teaching them as having authority, not as the scribes. He knew where his teaching came from. He knew that. This was different than what they had known before. Absolutely different. But it didn't stop there. Because they went, okay, you're teaching with authority? <laughs> the very next verse says, and a man with an unclean spirit was in their synagogue. <laughs> And then clean spirit cried out saying, What is it to us and to you, Jesus Nazarene, have you come to destroy us? I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. <laughs> that's, that's, that's quite a little soliloquy that, soliloquy that he's saying there. He's, he's, that's quite a statement. That's a lot of stuff that he's in there. He says, What is it to you, to us and to you, Jesus the Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, and he said, Be quiet, and come out of him. Now, unclean spirits knew him, and they knew his authority. That's pretty amazing. They knew where they stood, and he knew it wasn't good. <laughs> they had no authority with Jesus. This isn't good. Jesus has all this authority. And it's like, We know who you are. But Jesus did two things. He stopped the spirit's mouth, and then he stopped his function. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Shut up. Why did he do that? Because Jesus wasn't shown yet. Okay, He wasn't out there doing his total stuff yet. He didn't need the spirits to be, be telling him, telling everybody who he was. You just don't, I don't need you advertising for me. Just shut up. Okay? What is it to you? And you? Well, you'll find out what it is to me and to you. You're going to find out in a minute. Did I come to destroy you? If I did, then you would have already been destroyed. He says, but I know you, who you are, the Holy One of God. Shut up. Okay? That's not what I'm here as. And I'm not here as that. I'm here as the Son of Man. Okay? Just, just shut up. And be quiet and come out of Him. The very next two verses says this. 
And the unclean spirit convulsed him. And crying out with a loud voice, he came out of him. And all were astonished, so as to discuss to themselves, saying, Wow, what is this? And what new teaching is this? That he commands even the unclean spirits with authority. And they obey him. <laughs> they had understood his authority in teaching. He was teaching his authority. And then they said, well, what kind of new teaching is this? That it's backed up with actions? You mean there's an altar call at the church? And they're actually changing people? What's up with this? Can't do that. <laughs> I love it. Okay. This is authority in action. Authority does work. Jesus had submitted to the Father, and Jesus knew who he was. He didn't need any demon telling him. Authority in every area of ministry. He had the authority to teach. He had the authority to cast out demons. We also know that he has authority to do all sorts of other things. Okay? This is kind of a big deal with the authority. Let's flip over to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. 23 through 24. And it says... And he having come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came near to him as he was teaching. And they said, By what authority do you do these things? And, and who gave this authority to you? And answering Jesus said to them, I also will ask you one thing. Which of you tell me, which if you tell me, I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. So they asked him two questions. By what authority do you do these things? And who gave this authority to you? Now, if you remember, as we're talking about the centurion, okay, he was submitted. What? He knew where his authority was, and he knew who gave it to him. Now, they're asking Jesus these two questions. By what authority do you do these things? And who gave you this authority? So Jesus said, well, let me ask you one thing. And if you tell me that, then I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. Now, I had hoped that they would have answered that question. Because I wanted to hear what Jesus' answer was. <laughs> and so, what is this authority and who gave it to you? This was the source of that authority. Okay. So he goes on, he says, and he asked them, the baptism of John, they knew who he was talking about, from where was it? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned among themselves saying, Hmm, if we say from, set, from heaven, then he'll say to us, Why didn't you believe him? Because they fought him. Okay, But if we should say from men, then we fear the people who are standing around here, for they all hold John to be a prophet. Now, the question arises, Did they think they had authority? Yes, they did. What authority? And who gave it to them? Maybe. See, this is the same questions that they were asking Jesus. What authority do you do these things? He could have asked them, so what authority do you do your things? And they, well, we do the things in the temple. as like And who gave you that authority? And you know what they would have said? They would have said Moses. Hmm. That's what they would have said. Moses gave this. It's written in the law. <laughs> so Jesus... <laughs> the intended trap turned into a trap. Now Jesus had an opportunity to really mess them up, and he just didn't. He just <laughs> let this ride the way it was. They walked away going, Ugh. Okay? Caught in their own hypocrisy. And everybody saw it, and everybody knew it. <laughs> and <laughs> for the fear of the people, well, that will kill your authority. When you're afraid of the people, you're not going to do what's right in your authority. But the last verse of that little passage says this. And answering Jesus said, and answering Jesus, they said, We do not know. So he said to them, Well, then neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. 
authority is understood because of effectiveness. Do you have authority over a demon? Well, I don't know. Can you cast it out? If you can't cast it out, do you know your authority? <laughs> okay, so the issue comes, authority has its understanding in its effectiveness. Do you have authority over sickness and disease? Yes, you do. Have you told sickness and disease to leave? If it didn't, do you have your authority or do you understand it? Huh, kind of an interesting little quandary we're in here because I have cast out demons, told them to leave, and they did. And I have told sickness and disease to leave, and it has. I know that it works. But boy, it's not that simple. I do not walk around with a sheriff's badge saying I'm the sheriff of the spiritual stuff around here and just casting out. I can't do it indiscriminately. I've got to do what Jesus did. Watch the Father. Because it isn't about me having the authority. It's about me submitting to His authority. Amen. He answered both questions even by not answering. Okay? <laughs> but what authority? Well... Simple. Answer number one, by spiritual authority. Because these are things that were happening in the spirit realm. He was teaching in the spirit. He was casting out demons in the spirit. He had authority. Answer number two, well, the Father God of the universe, Yahweh. <laughs> he would have said it, my Father. That's the way he would have said it. That's kind of fascinating. So, the scribes and Pharisees, though, they had neither. They had no function and they had no relationship. Did they have authority? What would they do with that authority? They, they oppressed men. They didn't get men set free. Pretty, pretty intense here, okay? This is the fight that we're having even today. Let's flip back to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. This is fun. It says, And behold, they were bringing a paralytic lying on a cot to him, and seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed one, Be comforted, child. Your sins have been remitted. And behold, some of the scribes said within themselves, This one blasphemes. Blasphemos. <laughs> uh, uh, this is, now this is the guys that dug through the roof, and they lowered down this guy to Jesus. And... Uh, they had faith and persistence. I don't know if any of you have seen the, the new TV show called The Chosen. They did a very good job on this one. They did a very good job on this. I, I enjoyed this most thoroughly. Jesus knew the root of this man's sickness. Now this is the part that doesn't come out through most things. Is Jesus knew why this guy was paralyzed. He knew what the root of this was. And they had never heard anyone say this before. Because Jesus didn't heal the sickness because that wasn't the root. The root was the sin that he had been. And he was hammered up because of the sin for some way. And so Jesus knew that was the root. And seeing their thoughts, I don't want to bypass that little statement. And seeing their thoughts, Jesus said, <laughs> Why do you think evil in your hearts? For what is easier to say, your sins are remitted, or to say, rise up and walk? Spiritual perception because of submission. He was submitted to the Father. He didn't have anything that he was fighting on his own. He wasn't promoting anything. So he just sit there and he was able to have the perception of what was going on in the spirit realm because of his submission. Therefore, the discernment of evil, their making judgments and all that, his discernment was really right on top. The more you're submitted to what Jesus is doing, the higher your discernment is. The better your perception of what's happening around you. Now that's really good. If you're having a problem with with discernment or perceptions, maybe you're having a problem with submission. <laughs> That's a nasty thing to say in the middle of a Sunday afternoon. Okay. But which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, rise up and walk? Uh, well, neither one is easier. They couldn't say either one. Okay. This is the Greek word, by the way, it says remitted in this, in this uh, version, this translation, sins are remitted. Some say forgiven. It's the Greek word afiemi, which comes from two words, 
apo, off, and hiemi, to send. And it literally means to send it off. To send off the sin. Well, that's pretty wild. Okay, so he told the sin, get off him. And the man was able to stand up and walk. Okay, <laughs> this is so remitted. Afiemi to send it off. A binding affliction. There's something that was a bondage was binding this man, and Jesus said, "Oh, your sins are forgiven," and he was immediately able to move. That is amazing. Verses six through eight says, "But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth." to forgive sins or remit sins. He says, just so you know that I have this authority, he turns to the guy and he said to the paralytic, rising up, lift up your cot and go to your house. And rising up, he went away to his house. And seeing, the crowds marveled and they glorified God. Now look at the way this says this. The one giving such authority to men. What were the two questions? <laughs> Where, what authority do you have and where did you get that authority? And these, these guys knew. It was spiritual authority and it had been given by, by God. They knew. Of course, well, I don't know where in all this, in, in the thing, the chosen, uh, they use Nicodemus as the, the representative of the scribes and Pharisees in this. Now, remember, Nicodemus is only shown in John 3 and then once at the crucifixion. Okay, that's all we know really know about him. But they use him to use all this sort of stuff together. But it was... It, it, I thought they did a very fine job of, of mixing that all together. But uh, he knew it was a, a thing... How can you do that? How can you? How can you forgive sins? This was just beyond him. <laughs> he just, uh, yeah, what well, you just don't know, my father. That's the problem. They knew who gave him that authority. They knew it. Spiritual authority has many uses and functions. If we would just listen, see what's going on around it, pay attention to what the Scripture says. Jesus and the ex-paralytic knew exactly what happened, didn't they? They knew. The paralytic didn't fight him. He says, oh, it's because of that sin. And Jesus for, sent the sin off of him. And he was, he knew. <laughs> he knew. He didn't fight him. That was too fun. How about let's look at John 20. And I just and for those of you who need to have one of these alerts, this is the point where I, I go from teaching into meddling. Okay, just when I thought I'd give you alert right there. That was for Thanks. Dennis's sake. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Dennis. This is all for you. No, it isn't. But it's for <laughs> Here we go. John 20, 21 through 23 says this. Then Jesus again said to them, Peace to you. Now, this is after the resurrection, Jesus shows up into the upper room, just walks in. And he says, Peace to you because he freaked them out. <laughs> They're all going, Bah! And Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now this is the first time, this is the time that they received... Oh, I have this wrong in here. I'm going to, I'm going to poke this, I'm going to click on this, I'm going to say it wrong. Oh, yeah, I just want to let you know, I said it wrong. This is all good. He said, but this is when they first received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit and gave within them their spirits were born again right there on the spot. Received the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, in just about the same breath, he says, receive the Holy Spirit of whomever you may forgive, Afiemi, the sins, they are Afiemi to them. You send off the sins, and they are sent off to them. And whomever you hold or retain those sins, they have been held. Wow. Blanket understanding. And I, I, that's baptism of the Holy Spirit. I know it's, at the, it's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> you all just need to forgive me. That's all the way it is. Okay, Nathaniel, say whatever it is you're going to say. Nope. Okay. There it is. Okay. <laughs> At least 
At least I admitted it. I knew it was wrong when I... Okay, it's all good. But this is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But immediately what happened? <coughs> the first piece of spiritual authority was given was that you can forgive sins. Send sins off of people. And you can re retain those sins. You can hold on to it. That's pretty, pretty heavy. It requires submission, discernment, and humility. Now... That's amazing. I said this is where I go from preaching to meddling. Okay. <laughs> well, if you can't forgive somebody for what they've done to you, how can you tell somebody that their sins are forgiven for what they've done to somebody else? Ouch. How can we sit there and tell people, Wow, your sins are forgiven if we haven't forgiven. If we aren't the people who are being, who are knowing what forgiveness is about and, and understanding that we have been forgiven and we can forgive others, only then when we are clean of all that sin, when we are forgiven in every way, then we can look at somebody else and say, your sin is forgiven. Do we have that authority? Actually, we do. What's it going to require? It's going to require us being totally submitted to the Father so that when the Father says their sins are forgiven, we can tell them that. We can be the channel of the sending off of that sin. We can speak for that sin to be gone, and it will be. You know, I don't hear this happening very often. Just letting you know. I said, don't, don't hear it happening very often. I also don't do it very often. Have I ever told somebody, I send the sin off? Yes, I have. It's been very powerful. But I don't do it indiscriminately, and I don't do it flippantly. I don't do it just because, eh, go whatever. No, man, I have to hear from God on that one. But it can be done. Then it comes to Matthew 28. Oh, no, not Matthew 28. Yep. Sorry, starting in verse 18 through 20. <clears throat> Excuse me. And coming up, Jesus talked to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth was given to me. Now, before we get into the rest of this, you got to hear what he has to say. He's walking up to the group of disciples, and they have been born again for about 40 days. Okay? This is the end. This is where he's right at the end of everything happening. Just before he goes into heaven and says, Now hang around here for ten days until you receive the promise of the Father. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. But walking up, he just walks up to the group and he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has give, been given to me. That's mind-boggling. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. Now, for those of you who know that we've been playing with different sets of frequencies, like the physical frequencies, the soulish frequencies, and the spiritual frequencies, we know that in Deuteronomy it says, I, I hold heaven and earth as witness to you today that I have set before you life and death. I said heaven and earth. We know that it's the sets of what spiritual things and the physical things. I'm using both of them as a witness to what is going on here. But then Jesus walks up and he says, Now, I have been given all the authority in the spirit realm, and I have been given all authority on the earthly realm. Physical realm. Total authority. Did Jesus have authority over all kings at this point? Yep. Did he have authority over all magistrates yep every cop mm-hmm every governor uh-huh every president yes we look at all these going wow well, these are the height of authority no 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 they are all given authorities under the spiritual authority the spiritual authority is the highest and Jesus says I have every piece of a spiritual authority all authority is given to me on heaven and in earth then he tells them, having gone, disciple all nations. Now, for him to walk up to them and say, all authority is given to me on heaven and earth, now you go do this. 
you'd think that we'd pick up on this, but the greatest thing that we can do with our authority is to make disciples of all kinds of people. How do you do that? Well, you immerse them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's, that's going to take a lot. I, I was listening to a message this morning about a guy that was talking about end times. He says, what's, you know, he says, if all the things you're doing, if you're so concerned about end times, that you're not witnessing, you're not doing these different things, if you're not bringing people into the kingdom, then you've missed it. I'm sitting there going, well, and beyond that, it's not just about getting people born again. It's about getting people say it, set free. Getting people free of their stuff. Okay, mature. To grow them up. To disciple them. That's, that's our, I am not worry, worrying about Jesus coming tomorrow afternoon and sitting there going, Oh, I don't, I'm just going to not do anything until Jesus shows up. No, we've got a job to do. All authority. Occupy till I come. You're going to occupy till I come. Okay, and it's going to be that very thing. We've got a job ahead of us. We've got to disciple some people. And I know that everybody out there that is listening to the sound of my voice, if there's somebody who you have a little bit of authority over, if you're a parent, you already have disciples. They're called your children. If you're a grandparent, you have disciples. They're called your grandchildren. If you're a caretaker, you have your disciple. It's the person you're caretaking over. Folks, these are, these are the people we have been given responsibility for to make sure they are completely immersed into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have got to disciple them. And we've got to teach them to observe everything that God has commanded us to do. And then what Jesus say? He says, Behold, I am with you all the days until the completion of the age. Well, that was pretty good, huh? <coughs> Excuse me. Total authority, therefore a total command. We haven't understood the depth of what Jesus has asked us, to, uh, told us to do. I keep saying asked us to do. All authority is given to me. Now you go. That's a command. You know, not the command. Having gone, bad, the disciple is the command. John five twenty five through twenty seven says this, Truly, truly, I say to you that an hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and the ones hearing will live. For even as the Father has life in Himself, so He also gave to, to the Son to have life in Himself. <coughs> and He also gave authority to Him to exercise judgment, for He is the Son of Man. Wow. One more time. Hours coming now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and the ones hearing will live. For even as the Father has life in Himself, so He gave also to the Son to have life in Himself. He also gave authority to Him to execute judgment, for He is the Son of Man. Extreme submission gave Him life and judgment. You can't judge until you're totally submitted. You can't judge until you are totally submitted. Did you get that? This one? Did you get a picture? In Luke 12, 4 through 5, yeah, I'm almost done, folks. I, I feel like I'm treading on your souls out there. I'm not. I'm trying to be nice here. Luke 12, 4 through 5 says this. <laughs> but I say to you, my friends, stop being afraid of the ones killing the body. And after these things, not having any more they can do. But I will warn you whom you should fear. Fear the one who, after killing, has authority to cast into hell. Yea, I say to you, fear that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Jesus says, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. I, I, I just, yeah, you know. Uh, it, yeah, do we have authority? We can kill somebody. That's the worst we can do. But that's not the worst we can do because the one that God does is He, he has the authority to cast them into hell. That's, that's pretty heavy. The fear of Jehovah. Extreme relationship and insight. Extreme. I'll tell you something. The more you fear Jehovah, the more you'll love Him. The fear of Jehovah is not something where you run away from Him. The fear of Jehovah is where you run to Him. The more you fear Him, the more you'll love Him. So, we play in areas of extreme power. We do. We play. We play around with 
with these things. It's pretty intense. So let's talk about Jesus' spiritual authority for a second. Okay? We treat him as our servant. Oh, well, we do. We really do. We don't do what he tells us to do, but we tell him what to do. Lord, do this. Go out there. We think our prayer is just us sending God out to do our bidding. We don't even ask him what he wants. <laughs> what do you want to do with this? Is there something in your life that you've been kind of, you just don't want to do? And every time somebody brings it up, you just want to fight them on it? You're just like, yeah, 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 I don't want to do that. Anybody? Yeah. Maybe I should say everybody? <laughs> what does Jesus want you to do about that? Okay. But I don't like doing that part. You know, my kids always had that thing where every one of them had something that they didn't want to do because they didn't like doing that. And you know how much that slowed down us telling them to do it? <laughs> Not at all. Okay? I don't care. If you don't like doing it, you still need to do it. Okay? Some of us have real problems with washing dishes or doing laundry or cleaning our cars or I don't I don't know I'm just yeah I'm mowing the lard or shoveling the snow <laughs> some of us there's a lot of things we don't like doing but do we even ask the Lord Lord do you want me to do it he has been an afterthought to so many things in our lives and you know, we do all these things and say well Lord would you bless this we go ahead and do it. We go ahead and we want to do this, and then we get right in the middle of it and say, Okay, Lord, will you bless this? Did we ever ask if that's what he wanted to do? You know, kind of a big deal. We have issues that keep us from hearing him. Some of us really do. Now, this happens a lot in here in my office where I'll say, Okay, find Jesus. You know how hard it is for so many Christians that I know of to just close their eyes and just know that Jesus is standing right there to find him. And some people, it takes a long time for them to get around to actually finding Jesus. Uh, pretty heavy. Ooh, that should not be. We should be knowing him right now, right here, right now. Uh, somebody was in my office recently. I told him, I said, you need to go spend time with Jesus. And she went home and she couldn't find him. She couldn't find him. She just said, I'm going to sit here until I do, until I know that Jesus is right there. And she kept just working on that, praying Jesus show up, fighting through walls and just stuff. And finally she saw his hands. And then she kept working until she saw him more and more. And then she saw him as her shepherd. That was worth everything. That was worth everything for her to see that. Just to know him. Just to know him right there. That should drive us to get healed. We should find out why. What is the hindrance to us seeing Jesus? What is the hindrance for us hearing from him? We should find out. You want to know the real ultimate one is when we tell Jesus no. I, <laughs> I, I've put that out there so many different times, but how many times do we tell Jesus? <laughs> All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. And we say, no. I, I don't get where we get off doing that, okay? But his presence is continual everywhere. He's always with us all the time. And his love is absolutely total. And that's the only reason we get away with the stupid things we get away with. Because he still loves us. He's still there. He has patience and love and tenderness. And, and I, I just so often get the idea... I don't care how old I am, but I just like, I, I see myself as that little five-year-old and just Jesus, just good boy, as a boy, Lee. You, you, it's a good boy. Just. <sighs> That's what happened to the hair, okay? God just patted it all off, okay. Jesus is involved in absolutely everything in your life, and I don't care what it is. I just, it doesn't matter. He is right there and he is involved. That's all there is to it. So who has authority in your life? Who truly does have authority? You need to know that. We have become dull and unresponsive to the authorities that are around us. Kind of heavy duty. But when we listen, whoa, 
there is amazing freedom. When we do what He wants to do, there's amazing freedom, just totally. The Prince of Peace has authority in the realm of peace. You know, He rules. He has authority. That's an amazing, amazing deal. We need to re-examine our relationship with Him, don't we? I think it's time. It's time for us to re-examine wh what we do there. Do we pray like He is our servant, or do we pray like we are His? Are you mad at Him for not doing what you want? It amazes me. Sometimes, yeah. It amazes me how many times people just, well, I'm just mad at God for doing this. <laughs> Number one, what gives you the authority to be mad at God? Okay. Number two, what makes you think that he had anything to do with that thing you're mad at him about? He doesn't have control. He just is in charge. He has authority. He's told people what to do, but he doesn't have control. He doesn't make things happen. He has just a plan. He has a plan. He's in charge, but he's not in control. Sometimes you mess it up. <laughs> so are you angry at the father of all authority? <laughs> I just love the way that, that just sits. Are you angry at the Father of all authority? Hmm. So who gave you your authority? Where do you sit? We need to repent and listen. We need to just repent and listen to what God is saying to us. And then you will know if there's something between you and Him. Is there something between you and Him? Then you'll know. That's it. That's the day. I think, you know, this, this idea of just trying to find out, uh, does Jesus have authority? Uh, yeah, whether you believe it or not, whether you submit to it or not, whether you think of it or not, whether there's anything or not, it doesn't matter. You just, uh, he has it. And you will be held accountable to it. What is much more, and I don't want that to be a condemnation or judgment. That's what I want that to be, is a as a chance to find out what Jesus is doing, how He's doing it, and how to link up with Him to where we have this beautiful flowing of peace, this beautiful flowing of joy, this beautiful flowing of authority where you speak and things happen because you know you're empowered by Him. What a concept. So, so do we have any questions? Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> you know, going. you know that I'm going to be talking to you guys as individuals and saying, hmm, "So, what'd you get out of that?" Yeah, Jennifer's shaking her head. She's, "I know you're going to you're going to ask me. I just see." <laughs> Nathaniel didn't even turn on his camera, so he knows that I'm done and don't know what he's doing. So that's all good. So, anyway, guys, this is really important, don't you think? Mm -hmm. This is very a much. very deep thing that we are uh, needing to know. We need to walk in. So, more questions and answers today. Yeah, and that <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. So, oh. Uh, all of a sudden, I can't access my thingy here. Okay, I can turn off my... I don't know if I can. So, anyway, try and turn off my screen share. So, anybody have a qu any more questions? Comments? You had a word on one of your slides I'm correcting. Yeah. Gee, there's a shocker. What? Height. 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 It is still legally height. Yes, but you spelled it wrong. Nope. Spelled it right according to the dictionary. Mm -hmm. I looked this one up. It can be height, but this well, it's not, that's not the term. It's the if you are the height, not if you are the height of authority, but you are the height of authority. It makes it... Yeah, then you still need an E in it. Uh, I'll, not according to the dictionary. <laughs> ha! I looked this one up. Fight you on this one. Okay. Yeah, uh, which dictionary? Oxford. And they don't know. oh yeah, they don't know. And I also the Webster's. So there, you can just deal with <laughs> Webster. Okay, they funk and Wagnalls. Forget it. <laughs> oh really? Oh mercy day. Oh mercy. Oh. 
I haven't heard of that one in a while. It's all good. Well, if you want to buy me one, that's fine. <laughs> I know. They're online. Is that the black hat? <laughs> Was it the last hat that they used to in white mills? Yes, that's where I got it. Is where? Is laugh what? in. Oh, laugh in. Laugh in. They always said, look it up in your Funkin' and Wagnalls. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've ever had a Funkin' and Wagnalls, but that's all right. So anyway, so other other than a grammatical debate, anything else? You had a Compton's Encyclopedia. You had a Funkin' and Wagnalls to Oh, Compton's Encyclopedia. Hmm. <laughs> Well, that is dating you, buddy. That is dating you, bad. <laughs> well, I do have a question. Okay, I like it. And it's an actual valid question. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, if you cycle on back to Romans 8, verse 9. Okay. When the Roman officer says he is a man under authority, the word for authority there is exousia. You mean Matthew? In Matthew, you mean? Right. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm he said being a Roman soldier. <laughs> In Matthew, which chapter? Nine? Eight, nine. Chapter eight, verse nine. Okay. Yes. So, the question is? The question is, why is that exousia and not tasso? Because it's actual authority. That's what our word study is all about. Is the word exousia which is authority. I'm a man under authority, but it's hupo authority. So it wasn't just about under the order of, but it's under the actual authority of. Okay. That makes sense? Yep. I do have a question that's been bouncing in my head since the early part. Um, being under the authority of people who have usurped that authority, Yes. Uh, you know, they don't have true authority, but they've usurped it. And, uh -huh. You know, they're doing whatever they want to with it. Okay. Uh, that wasn't a question. That was a statement. Yeah, no, that, I just want to make sure we're all on the same track. That authority was stolen, so it's not mm -hmm. true authority, right? True. Absolutely right. So, but we perceive it as authority. Therefore, every time we look at somebody else who has authority, we lump them together. And so we don't want to submit to that authority because others have misused it. Right, yeah. And that's the problem. That's why I say you have to get healed from the misuses of your authority in your past so that you can submit to the good authorities now. And so the question is actually telling the good from the bad. Uh-huh. Because because experience has has taught you that bad is the way it is. Well, so telling good yeah. how, do you, how do you discern good authority from bad authority? Well, so sometimes you have you actually have authorities that are the right authorities, but they're just not doing what is right. Okay, how much do we have to submit to them? Uh, quite a bit. It comes a point where they did they are they hurting you or are they causing you to sin? Are they causing you to do something that is uh, ungodly. At a certain point, I don't have to submit to their authority because it is no longer a higher authority. When they do that, they become a lower authority, and I don't have to submit to a lower authority. Lower than lower than me. Neater, neater, neater. Oh my God. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what is that in Greek? <laughs> <laughs> Nero, Nero. Yeah, Ninero, 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 Eo. So I don't, I don't know. Oh, so, yeah, and so as we get into this even deeper, as we get into more, more understanding of the authorities and how they work, um, one of the things that we're going to be probably, probably next week, which. I usually am a week out to where I'm. I would have next week's done. I don't have next week's done. <sighs> um, slacker. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> but I think <laughs> next week is the authority of the believer. I think we're going to start getting into the believer's authority. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, yeah. So, um, if if all goes the direction it looks like it's heading, that's what we're going to be doing next week is the believer's authority. And so. Um, 
you that, know, the sad thing is you said believer's authority and how that all functions, and several people said, ooh, yeah. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> oh, we're in so much trouble. <laughs> that's that's the one I'm thinking, is yes, because you're going to be held accountable for that. But that's okay. I don't want to bring that up. I'll bring that up next week. And I won't so. listen. <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne's bowing out immediately, so that's the end of that one. So that's all good. So. Hi, Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have that discussion. <laughs> I might have to use my authority on her. All right. Good luck. Oh, good luck with that. Yeah. It's nice knowing you, Mr. Eddie. Sarah, do you, do you hear this? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I put my money on her. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, I, got money? Yeah. That's a, <laughs> you just you said you got money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, God bless you all. Thank you. And um, and I love you dearly. So. Uh, you also. Oh, there's Chuck. Hi, Chuck. Okay. Oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a whole crew. Nothing but the crew. All right. Well, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, that you're taking us deeper and deeper in understanding and how to deal with authority and how to submit and how to, to go on. And, Lord, for all these things, we give you the praise. We thank you for it. Lord, touch us. Help us to, to see what things have been in our lives that have not done right, that has messed up our ability to think according to authority. And we just give you the praise, Lord. Teach us, show us, heal us, and bring us to that place of absolute peace and perfect rest in you. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We'll talk to you all later. Be blessed.